and now it's down to one, sometimes two, sometimes none. Just depends on what I ate and how much I ate the day before. So it's, it's remarkable. It's, it's really remarkable. Um, so, uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you to Martha um, for doing this for me. I've had a few requests um, from people to put up um, some testimonials because I don't have any to date just yet. Um, so, thank you very much, Martha, for doing this with me. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Good stuff. And um, maybe, Martha, just to start off, could you maybe just um, give people a little bit of background on you and um, how you feel you came to be in this situation? Um, well, I do have a history of autoimmune in my family. My mother has several disorders. I have a cousin who is two, I'm 51. Um, my cousin is a couple years older and he's had Crohn's for, I want to say nine, 10 years, full blown. And he's, you know, suffered greatly with it. Uh, I have two other female cousins all within the same years, within two or three years. And they both have some, um, intestinal issues um, and some have been connected with autoimmune so I have that history in my family but I never thought it would happen to me and um, I had been seeing a naturopath um, last summer and um, my symptoms I was having a few symptoms but the first time she ever saw me she said Martha you're the second healthiest person I've ever worked with and I was you know exercising three days a week, um, eating healthy. I kind of had done a lot of research with reading different books and searched out some autoimmune um, diets and good foods, bad foods, but of course I would cheat. And living in Houston, having Tex-Mex a couple of times a week, that you know never solved any problems, but I can't go long without my chips and salsa or chips and queso. So um, that was sort of my cheat. And um, you know, I was pretty mindful of eating healthy, but I was eating grains and I was um, having lactose-free milk uh, as my dairy. Um, and eating Greek full fat, Greek yogurt, everything that everyone tells you, all the research said is good for a healthy lifestyle. So um, I started kind of having some symptoms like, you know, um, occasional diarrhea, not feeling well, lethargic. I was having some, um, you know, some stressful kind of situations at work. Um, uh, long story short, I ended up in the emergency room December 19th of 2018, and um, they sent me home after two IV bags of fluid and a couple of um, two different uh, antibiotics, one of them being Cipro, um, and they put me on the BRAT diet, bananas, applesauce, what is the other? It's toast and I forget what the R is, doesn't matter, um, rice. And I ate that for five days uh, and struggled. And I was losing weight, no energy. And so Christmas Eve, I ended up back in the ER. They gave me the same thing or two, two more bags of fluid. And within an hour and a half, I was taken to the um, infectious disease unit at Methodist Hospital here in Houston. And spent Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and half the day after, they kicked me out with no diagnosis. And I was still having symptoms, but I was begging to go home because they were prepping me for a colonoscopy, but my GI doctor was out of town, and so they had some people rotating through, and it was never the same doctor. Um, anyhow, uh, I went home, again, with no diagnosis, and another... Um, antibiotic that they tried on me. So I was on, I think, two, maybe three antibiotics. And in the hospital, they gave me Cipro through IV. And my theory is whether they tested me for any sort of bacteria or not, the antibiotic probably masked any sort of result, any sort of possible result. So um, the more research I did, I read that some antibiotics can cause ulcerative colitis or any sort of colitis. So fast forward to um, 
the beginning of January. I think the ninth was the first time I was able to get in to see my GI, who is, you know, a brilliant man. I have complete respect. Um, and he actually did so much to help me, but he diagnosed me through via colonoscopy on January 17th of 2019, um, that I had a C. diff infection. That was the very first time I'd heard the word C. diff. And I said, well, what is that? He said, it's a bacteria. But while I was in there, you also have moderate to severe ulcerative colitis. No one in my family had had that. And my symptoms were bleeding when I went um, to the restroom. Um, no uh, strong pain, but I'd lost a lot of weight. And um, I was about this, you know, this time last year, I was probably about 144, five. Now I'm 127. And so it was dramatic weight loss. Um, so he put me on mesalamine and recommended that I eliminate all grain from, or, or all dairy from my diet. And um, I, I asked, I questioned him about the grain. And he said, well, you know, there's no for sure, I mean, study that, um, you know, says remove grain, but I, I did it anyway. And I said, well, uh, there's no um, protocol or solution for exit. There's no exit strategy out of this. It's my only option medication because hearkening back to my naturopath, she had given me two supplements, which are L-glutamine and uh, D3 and K2, uh, a, a solution that you just took orally. And I thought, okay, well, um, he's, he told me to eliminate all of those. And he put me on a very, very strong uh, probiotic called Visbiome. And I believe it was you, Stephen, who said that's probably one of the strongest ones on the market. So um, all that said, I took the mesalamine for about three months and mid mid May, I went back and saw the doctor and we did blood work. He said, your inflammation markers are off the charts. The highest you can be is a 40 and I was a 39. He said, so you have very, very high inflammation, Martha. It's still happening. And I think we need to switch you from mesalamine to Humira or Eucerin. Well, I wasn't having any of that. I, I didn't want to go through an IV situation where I have to go every three weeks and wait for an hour and a half for my medication or alternatively suppress what my symptoms were with Humira, a drug that doctors throw at everything from colitis to um, um rheumatoid arthritis to a lot of other things, um, eczema. I mean, I just thought there's got to be another choice. There's got to be another solution. So um, I went cold turkey without telling my doctor about it. And I wasn't trying to be a rebel or anything like that. It just plateaued for me. And did it help for a, a short period of time? Yes. I will say that it sort of, quote unquote, got me over the hump, if you will. And um, I wasn't having as many bleeding ep episodes, but there was still significant blood. There was still diarrhea. The stools still weren't forming um, the way that I thought that they should. And I was in pain. This is the first time I was really having pain, significant pain on one side. So I just thought, I'm, I'm just going to start Googling and looking on YouTube. And Stephen, I was... Um, <laughs> in the bathroom where you spend a lot of time. And I just heard kind of in my heart, these two words, heal thyself. And so I knew that there was something telling me that I needed to search out an alternative that was healthy. And I thought to myself, where in my research have I heard heal thyself? Well, it was Jordan Rubin's book called Patient Heal Thyself. So I listened to Jordan's story again, and I had read that book four years ago. And um, I just thought, okay, he's on to something. So I started looking at all of these people, had testimonials on YouTube, and yours came up. And that's how I found you. And I thought, you know what? This is a young guy. He doesn't have his own brand of... Um, you know, supplements, and he's not trying to sell me something. 
And I thought, you know what, I want to interview him. And so that's how I came to you, Stephen, because not, you know, disparaging anyone and people have to make money somehow. And he has a very successful business, but that just wasn't for me. And I just thought, you know what, I think that I want to talk to Stephen and give him a chance and just see if we're on the same page. And then finding out that you had this long history with mesalamine, you had pancolitis, very similar to mine, but yours was, I think, more severe. And, you know, you had walked through a lot of the similar emotions, um, you know, um, a lot of the same kind of story, I think, or similar. And I just thought, you know what, I really want to talk to him and give him a chance. And so when I heard um, about your program, you we, you and I spoke for an hour um, before I even signed up for the program. And um, I just thought, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Because once I found out what your, um, how affordable you are and what your pricing is, I just decided, you know what, a month of mesalamine is more expensive than a month with Stephen. So that's how I kind of got to where I am. So if I left anything out, let me know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I appreciate you being so thorough and like forthcoming about things. I, I, I think it's awesome. I, I think it's necessary as well because that's kind of what helps people to relate. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, um, I guess one of the important things to say is, you know, obviously we're not trying to bash the medical profession here. Like, I mean, you, you, you speak very highly about your GI, right? Saying he's a wonderful man. And, you know, I think, um, the important thing, um, is to kind of, uh, build the right support team, right? So support team insofar as your friends and family, um, a GI who's willing to play ball with you going down the natural route and kind of support you on that journey. Um, and myself. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think it's um, uh, the medical profession have done a lot of amazing things for me, for you, um, for a lot of people. And I just think um, even though what they do to an extent with IBD is uh, teach reliance on, you know, medications and, and the healthcare mm -hmm. system, um, it's often not um, anything that is, uh, or rather it's... Um, there's, there's definitely no malice in it. I just think it's perhaps like a lack of education and training around this specific disease um, because there are, are, there are a lot of nuances um, with IBD. And to really understand that, I think you actually have to have lived with it. I think you have to know the disease intimately. Um, and unfortunately, that's not a, a sort of um, a place that a lot of these uh, mainstream medical practitioners come from. Um, and that, that extends to, um, even like functional medicine doctors and naturopathic doctors, like a lot of the times they will stick you on just like a sort of blanket autoimmune protocol, um, which might have things like nuts and honey and various mm -hmm. things, um, that can, which actually can be inflammatory. That can be inflammatory. Right. Um, mm -hmm. so like, you know, I, like, I don't think anyone's trying to do a bad job here, whether it's a, a sort of functional medicine doctor, naturopathic doctor, uh, mainstream medical practitioner. Um, I just think there is a lack of education around this type of thing. Um, and maybe that's something we'll see change in, in the coming sort of years. But, you know, as things stand, um, it is, you know, people like me and some of the other guys out there and ladies out there, um, who are kind of doing this work. So, um, that's great, Martha. I appreciate that. Um, maybe you can just, um, talk a little bit about, um, your experience on the program, maybe what your symptoms were then and to what they are now. So I started, I believe a little over five weeks ago and the third day I stopped bleeding and I was so happy. It was remarkable. Um, of course, you know, I didn't, like bananas, but now I tolerate them because I know that that has a certain bacteria or an enzyme that's really good for gut building. And I, I'm so sick of sweet potatoes, but I know I've gone down to about a half of a sweet potato a day. And again, that's another good enzyme. So, um, you know, just ed educating my, having had some education just on my own, searching and an interest in nutrition, um, I think has really benefited me. And I know that that doesn't apply to everyone, but I find it fascinating. I'm, I'm, 
um, this is uh, like a thrilling kind of positive experience for me, and I can't wait for our call on Friday, which is scheduled to, you know, hopefully maybe add a few more foods. So it's been, um, I don't want to say fun, but I also enjoy cooking. Um, the only thing I will say is that, you know, being single, it is difficult to have, you know, my a lot of my meals alone because right now I can't go out to eat because I have to prepare my foods at home. So if my friends are meeting out for someone's birthday, then, you know, I just need to tell them I'll come at the end or, you know, I'll just stay for a little bit. So that's been a challenge. Um, you know, you, you can be so emotionally, if you're not in a healthy place, it can be very emotionally damaging, um, this disease or any autoimmune disorder where you have to have some sort of isolation to heal don't you agree absolutely yeah you, you know and, and i think um um one of the uh one of the, the the important things about that is just being able to communicate properly with people um and because it it's it's a really difficult conversation to navigate like having to sort of um spill your guts out to someone so to speak um, yeah. about, you know, these, like, nasty bowel habits you're having. The, like, because if someone says, like, do, do you want to come out for a drink? Um, it's kind of <laughs> difficult to say, no, I'm probably going to spend most of the day running to the restroom. I'm probably going to bleed a bit. Then I'm going to lie down in a cold sweat. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, like, it's uh, it's quite heavy. So I think, mm. um, you know, l learning how to kind of um, communicate that um, to people um, and almost kind of having, like, a having like a go-to phrase um, to actually explain what's going on to people is, is quite a useful thing. Um, it's as you say that because it's, it's pretty remarkable, you know, everyone has the best intentions in inside of your community, inside of your circle. Um, but a lot of people tend not to remember, even though you've said your disease 10 times, you've shared with them what's wrong, and there's compassion there and empathy there, but until they've walked in your in your footsteps and lived in your body, they will never understand because all I hear is, you look great, you've lost weight, you know, you look so healthy. But inside, you know, you're really sort of still struggling. Yeah, yeah for sure. You, you know, and, and I think um, just on what you said around you know, having to um, be in a good space mentally for this because, you know, there is um, undoubtedly some social isolation that happens from the disease, but then also from, like, following a fairly limited diet as you've been doing. Um, you really kind of have to have the fortitude to think about the short-term pain um, versus long-term gain because mm -hmm. there, there, is, there is a big picture here. Um, and that big picture doesn't involve you being a hermit. That big picture involves you getting out there and doing stuff and living life and traveling and doing all the things you wanted to do. Um, and it involves you doing that for the next 50 years, right? right. Um, mm -hmm. So if you need to undergo, you know, two, four, six months of, you know, um, call it suffering, call it what you want, um, for that big picture, it's, it's kind of worth it, right? Yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah. Um, so Martha, um, maybe you could just sort of um, mention uh, what your bowel habits are, are like these days. I know you say you stopped bleeding early on, but maybe just a little bit about um, what your restroom habits are these days. Uh, I think when I started the program five weeks ago, I was probably going four, maybe five times a day. And now it's down to one, sometimes two, sometimes none. Just depends on what I ate and how much I ate the day before. So it's, it's remarkable. It's, it's really remarkable. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy, very pleased. And, and the, the stools are formed? Yes, it's like a continuous, long <laughs> strand, but it's like a, a perfect cylinder. There's like no lumps. I mean, I, lo just, I love your honesty. I, I love your honesty. <laughs> this is... I don't know any other way to say it, but you know, you know, when you when you're in this, you just have to talk about your poo. You just do. <laughs> yeah. So that's 
going on, but it's, you know, even on the mesalamine, sometimes I was going urgently and now it's, I wouldn't describe it or define it as running or urgent. It's just when I have to go, I have to go, you know, and that brain gut thing is telling me I need to go now. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, when I would be out even going to the grocery store. I wanted to make sure that I went to a store where I knew the, where the bathroom was. And it's, it's that, that was very common in my research that people who were going 10 times a day, you just, a fear takes over even when you're out driving in the, you know, I live in the fourth largest city in America. If I get stopped by a train or, you know, get into a huge traffic jam, I would always time my work around leaving, you know, quitting like around four so I wouldn't get in the five o'clock traffic. And it, you know, it's a real fear. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's something that that you genuinely have to factor yeah. into your, your daily lifestyle mm-hmm. decisions, right? It's um, yeah. it it mm-hmm. it's it's not a it's not a throwaway statement. You say, you saying that like you really have to factor this stuff in because you don't want to be right. caught short. And everyone, um, or almost everyone who's had a diagnosis has, you know, had scenarios mm-hmm. where they're caught short. I know I've had a couple which were really really bad. And now I can look back on them and smile, but at the time they were the most stressful thing I'd, you know, probably ever been through. Right. Um, but um, so yeah, just on on the the topic then of um, the uh, the lifestyle side of things, Martha. I know, um, you know, and, and this 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 kind of makes um, my job a lot easier. The fact that you are a big believer in the power of various lifestyle factors mm-hmm. um, in your healing. Um, yes. so maybe you can just maybe talk around your experience. You, I know you mentioned a few words to me, like community, faith, gratitude. Yes. Um, I don't know if you can maybe put a few words to that. Absolutely. Um, so I, um, am in, in, in very involved in a, um, loving church community that's very close to my house. And I've been there about two and a half years now moved from, and, but my faith has always been strong and I'm a believer in healing that my, my God, Jesus can heal. He's done it before where I had an overnight healing. So I have this prayer community, um, and I'm a big believer in prayer, um, that has been praying for me with me. Um, a lot of behind the scene things have been happening that I, you know, I'm finding out about that people have been praying for me, prayer chains, all of that. And um, I believe that is part of, you know, absolutely part of my healing, um, if not most of it. Now, do I have to participate in this and do the right thing and search and work, do my part? Yes, absolutely. And that's where your program has come in, because you have to have a synergy um, for this type of debilitating disease. So um, that has been a huge part of my healing because I get encouragement from my community. I get um, support from my community. People would drive me to the grocery store when I was too weak to push a cart, yes, Um, or go to the store for me when I just didn't feel like it. Um, Lots of things like that. And having that network already available to me was wonderful. I mean, my pastor was texting me while I was in the hospital on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve. So and saying that, you know, the church was praying for me. That was a huge encouragement. I mean, who wants to be in the hospital on my highest holy day of the year? So it just, or, you know, I I just, um, that was, that really helped me get through. And so my faith has been even more encouraged I um, just really feel like unless you have this as part of your healing, it's really, um, and I'm, I mean, I'm not pushing my faith on anyone. It's, it's really um, important and it's an integral part of the whole person. I really believe that. And so all that said, your gratitude practice has really um, encouraged me as well the breathing. And so when I breathe in, I breathe in, God is love, God is joy, God is peace, God is patience, God is kindness, God is gentleness, God is faithfulness, God is um, 
uh, self-control. There's nine fruits of the spirit that we believe that live in us. And so that's what I breathe in every day. And then I start thanking um, the Lord for all of the things around me, my home, my family, my community, Sammy, my cat, um, just everything that has um, um, supported me through this process. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. You know, and, and I think, um, as you say, like, you know, things like uh, community, faith, gratitude, right? Like they all have their own um, mechanisms. And then if you have a look um, at like some of the the science, just to what these things do to you physiologically, um, right. all of them are really good at reducing the amount of cortisol flowing through your system, the amount of adrenaline flowing through your system. Um, you start releasing some soothing hormones. Um, so while, well, whilst they are sort of very good um, at doing their own thing, like community not letting you feel alone, faith also not letting you feel alone, gratitude kind of shifting your mindset from that mindset of scarcity to that mindset of abundance, um, physiologically there's change happen, happening as well. It's, it's, not just, um, it's not just their own unique mechanism, it's their mechanisms that they all have in common um, which is basically reducing these nasty stress hormones um, and increasing like the the good hormones that you want flowing through your body. So there is there is um, there is a faith aspect to it. There's a science aspect to it, um, and I just think it's it's awesome that you appreciate the power of these lifestyle factors because um, one of my biggest challenges as a coach is to get people to buy into how important the lifestyle stuff is, um, mm -hmm. and I I often find myself in situations where um, people only want to talk about the food and they only want to talk about the diet and they think the food's going to get them a hundred percent of the way there. Um, and honestly, it rarely does. Like you, you, you do need to appreciate just how important other things are like connecting with people, like getting outdoors, like being thankful for the things that you do have. Like these are all very powerful parts of your healing. Um, that unfortunately some people just don't tap into and don't want to use. And unfortunately, um, even all that said, that I, you know, re repeat my quote unquote mantras, if you will, every day, and my, I, I do my gratitude practice morning and evening, fear can still creep in. Anxiety can still creep in if you allow it. Um, so I just have to put those ideas away as soon as that, that happens and just tell myself that I'm strong, just affirm myself. And I, I go and read good things um, that are edifying to me. I make a phone call to a friend who can edify me. Um, I, I watch things um, that can edify me. I try not to, you know, surround myself with, you know, external things like movies, music, anything that's going to um, attract any sort of darkness or fear or anything like that. I just want to stay positive through this. And again, I think that's that's been part of keeping a, a good positive attitude um, and just not allowing those things to come to mind mm -hmm. or take root, you know. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, it, it's very easy to to let these things creep into your head, and then before you know it, you've kind of you're in this like depressing spiral where for, for the last twenty five yeah. minutes you've just thought of like the worst freaking stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's it, it's really good to have a way to kind of intercept those thoughts um, and not let them lead you down that path. Um, yeah. Cool. All right, Martha. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, I guess maybe as a as a parting thing. Um, is there any, or like, what, what would like one bit of advice be, um, that you would give to someone in your situation or, 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 or in your situation as it was two months ago? Um, I think just continue to, per if, if you've signed up for your program or if a person has signed up for the, your program, continue to persevere and practice. And one of the first sentence as you said to me while we were having our first call was non-compliance is not an option. I mean, I have really adhered to the program. Maybe there's um, some spices that I've just kind of used sparingly in, you know, that are not on my chart, but um, having that kind of structure works for my personality. 
um, because I was cobbling together all of these different diets. And um, I think I just needed a structure of some, from someone who has walked through this and who has some prior wisdom and knowledge and experience. So I would just say, stick to the program if you can. Yeah, don't don't veer off and don't be a rebel. <laughs> I haven't paid Martha to say that, I promise. <laughs> I, I had no idea she was going to say that. I think that's awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, cool. All right, Martha, I'll let you go. You've been an absolute legend. Um, thank you for being so honest. Um, I think it's really helpful to help people kind of relate to you and maybe you know, hopefully give them some belief that there's an answer to this, be it through me or, or someone else. Um, just, yeah, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's very much appreciated. There is hope. There is hope for healing. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Martha. Take care. Bye.